Yo, what's up, everybody? My name is Raynell Roy. Welcome back to my channel, Fishing Trips, and we back for the vlog, y'all. Check it. Got a special episode for y'all today because doing, you know, doing something a little different. All right. Now, normally when I go fishing, I leave Houston about 4 a.m., 4:30. All right. Currently, the time is now 10 a.m. Okay. Why are you leaving so late right now? Well, number one, the wind is trash today. All right. There's a small craft advisory. I was gonna take my Hobie out, but my Hobie is apparently a small craft, so I didn't want to die today. Okay. So I was thinking, like, what can I do? as far as fishing on windy days where can i fish and i remember last time i went crabbing i was on some side roads and i seen some ditches on the side that were protected by the wind so that's what i'm about to do i'm about to go to the gulf i'm just gonna randomly drive around jump out of my truck and fish some side dishes and probably crab them too i mean what's the worst can happen personally i think i can catch at least one flounder today and a few crabs i think i can do it <laughs> enjoy the vlog y'all let go at the first spot i'm gonna scout out real quick once again y'all i've never i never fish here cast net here never crab here never been here before so i'm just out really hopping out my truck and just gonna walk around and see if we see anything interesting all right yeah, yeah. so this is um this is a side creek i'm not sure let me show y'all what i'm looking at right now fairly clear quite honestly there's birds I know I hate birds oh, it's like a rocky, rocky bottom you can't tell there's a sign down there what does that say out do not anchor something I don't know this looks interesting man I'm not sure if it's fishy though I want to drive down there. Let's drive down a little farther. Yeah, let's drive down a little farther and see what's um, towards the end of the road. Let's see what it looks like. This is a crabbing boat. That's a good sign. Yeah, all right. So I don't know if this is going to be the spot that we start at yet, but you know, we're exploring, man. You got to get out the house, jump in your car, your truck, just drive around. Hop out and just look. <laughs> Alright, come on y'all. Let's go. So this looks interesting. I don't have any bait, but I do got my cast net. You guys over there doing? What y'all doing over there, buddy? What y'all doing over there? I'm trying to see if I see any kind of fish activity. Fish, crab, bait activity, anything activity wise. Yeah, man, I'm out in the middle, really nowhere. It's only just me and that one guy and his dog back there. So, just because you go to a certain, what the hell was that? What is that? Y'all, just because you go to a certain spot and there's nobody around doesn't mean it's not a good spot a lot of times monkey see monkey do people all go to the same spot because that's where they see other people at oh man just go off the unbeaten path of um random places i'm convinced that i don't know if anything's over here okay but we're gonna go ahead and get the ultralight out let me park over here out the way we'll do a few casts we'll spend about 15 minutes here and see if not that whole road as well there's a few of the spots that i've saw before where it looks like you can park on the side maybe without getting hit so i might try that for now let me try this little section here i wonder if there any crabs over here though look at this grassy area man there's a flounder there has to be a flounder over here 
or I can definitely get my cast bait, cast net. See if I can cast net some finger mullet. Eh, you never know. <laughs> All right, let me get my gear, camera, one rod. We'll do some casts and get it popping. All right, y'all. So once again, um, the time is now 12 p.m. If you look that way, if you look all the way that way, I'm the only person on this one mile stretch of roadway. So um, that means two things. Either A, um, I'm an idiot, because this is a horrible fishing spot, because there's nobody here and it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Or B, I'm a genius, because I'm fishing spots that people aren't trying to fish, apparently. So let's um, do some exploring on these little side dishes. I got my ultralight rod. I'm gonna use some really light uh, artificial lures and see what we can do, you know? I got my boots on, right? I do got some thigh high waiter boots as well. If, if I wanna get a little deeper in the water, probably won't, but you know, just in case, see if we can get it done. One flounder, one crab, one finger mullet. Mullet is a, is a goal for today's video. All right. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's come over here. We'll work this grass line. Oh, that wind is crazy. Don't blow my camera down, baby. Let's just toss it right here at the mouth of whatever the hell this is on this ditch. I see mullet jumping out there, and that's a good sign. I mean, it might be some flounder hanging out around this grass line, right? All right, y'all, so let's try to do something that I can't really do is cast net some bait. Let's get some water here. There we go. Yeah, that's not that many things I hate more than a cast net. Maybe rainbow trout and coumarets, but that's about it. So we'll see if we can get us a finger mullet. Because the spot actually might be good. However, the thing they're looking for is live bait not my artificial put this over here because of the noise and i keep telling myself take some time to you know watch some youtube videos on how to throw a cast net but ain't nobody got time for that Once again, this cast net has been in storage for about five years. I quit using it because I got frustrated. But with prices of bait these days, it's almost mandatory that you got to learn how to throw a cast net. It's only about a four foot. I don't got to be perfect. <laughs> we just got to get a few. <sighs> Honestly, respectfully, that was not a bad cast at all. I'd be surprised I don't have anything. <gasps> wow. Check it out, man. We actually got some bait. I was going for mullet, but I'll be honest with you, man. I ain't even mad at what I got. Where the hell are we go? There we go. Check it out, y'all. That is a true wild shrimp. Perfect size for bait, actually. All right. So we can catch shrimp out here? Bet. Say less to the bucket you go, my friend. All right. Y'all like that technique? You know what I'm saying? You gotta just, it's like a three point shot like Steph Curry. You gotta just kind of hold it for a second. Anything? No. Whew. 
Yo, cast netting is a lot of work, <laughs> but it saves you a lot of money. I know y'all probably can't see it, but I see some random bubbles out here. So I'm just gonna cast out, see what happens. <sighs> Wasn't a long cast, but it was a cast. Oh, oh my God. Let's go, baby. <laughs> yeah, let's go, baby. What? This, now this is what we was looking for, y'all. This is what we were looking for, baby. Yes, that right there is flounder candy. No bird, no bird, it's mine. <clears throat> okay, I got sweat in my eye, I can't see, I can't see. Wait, 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 wait. All right, y'all, let me, ouch. Now, he's, uh, they're slimy and small because they're finger inside. There you go. All right, y'all. I told y'all I saw bubbles out there. This is exactly what we're looking for. Finger size mullet, flounder candy. Great cast for now. I got one, two, three, four, five, maybe five of them. Perfect. Let's put these in a bait bucket. We'll probably do a couple of more casts over here and we'll be good to go. Yeah! Knew I can do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all, so I'm back in the truck. I've been here about an hour, no fish, about 10 to 11 finger mullet, which is nice. I'm gonna start working my way down to another spot. Note to self right now, please watch the YouTube video on how to throw a cast net. I mean, please, bro. It might take like 15 minutes. That's all you gotta do. Take 15 minutes right now, watch the YouTube video on how to throw a damn cast net. They say fish supposed to be like stress-free or relaxing. I, I, just, I didn't get the memo. I didn't get the memo because this is not stress-free. This is not relaxing. I hate cast nets, bro. I hate cast nets. Only because I don't know how to use them. It's my own fault. Let, let me stop ranting. Let's go to the next roadside spot and keep it moving. We still got to get a crab or flounder. It's going to be a long day. Let's check out this rare, random roadside place. Okay, first observation is, it's kind of weird. Kind of trashy, so people definitely know about it. Tires, that's never, never a good sign. Yeah, yeah. Got somebody here crabbing, freelining. Interesting. The hell is that? All right, y'all. So my next random roadside ditch is literally in the middle of nowhere. No, that's slimy. See how bad it is. Hold on. Yep, you're gonna die on that. Not going there. Not going there. So, could be nice. Small crabs. That's really big though. Interesting. Interesting spot. One, two, three. Yeah, like five. Five hand lines. So it's a, I don't know if this is a spot we can actually crab on. We ain't walking past that. That's death right there. I don't know, man. It looks kind of polluted, deoxidized, meaning no oxygen. Still a few casts. I came down here. Might as well. Still a few casts while I'm down here. I don't know if I'm gonna try to crab over here, but this video is cast netting, fishing, and crabbing. All right, on today's episode of 101 Ways to Die, 
fishing on random roadside creeks. Alright. Let's post up by this tire. AKA rattlesnake. Perfect spot for rattlesnake. Okay, well let's sit you right there. I don't want no problem, big fella. This is a zero percent chance I'm gonna catch anything on this spot. This actually looks like a great spot for um, crabbing. I wanna see that guy catch something. I wanna see how big they are. Yeah. I don't know there's alligators over here, but let's just, let's just do a few casts, man. We, we made it this far, it's not gonna hurt. The good thing is the mosquitoes have not been around caught one I didn't see so windy mosquitoes ain't really out and about although I think I feel one on my back y'all let me know is a mosquito on my back I'm paranoid now oh, I think I have snakes around me alligators it's a lot of grass in here I can't tell I know one thing, if there's fish in here, like right now, I'ma get it. So, um, fishing Roadside Creek so far has not been a success. Castinating Roadside Creek has been a success. Got about 10 finger mullet. The creek is up, which is great. So I need to um, still catch a crab and a fish. All right. Oh no. Oh yeah. The tide is high. That's a great sign. All right, yeah. High tide, it's a really good sign. That pushes the crabs closer to shore. So hopefully they're here. So simple double ring, crab net, chicken leg, drop it in. It's not rocket science, right? Set up our chair and relax. So we got all our, um, I have all my um, crab nets and free lines set up. Have a total of 12. Um, time is now 2.15. So I've been out here for two hours and 15 minutes, not at this one spot, but since I started fishing. Yeah, man, we gotta, we gotta get it together. Let me set up my little station, my little chair, so I can relax, get off my feet, hydrate. I have those mullet, finger mullet. I might just kind of freeline those on my ultralight. With a jig head, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, we gotta catch a fish and a crab to complete this goal. Now, I could say, you know, I'm looking around at, you know, this beautiful nature and I should be thankful. I am thankful, damn it, but I still wanna eat. I'm thankful for food. We gotta get it done, man. It's two hours from now. Two hours, nothing, but it's a process, baby. It's a process. All right, let's set up our chair. Let's get some water. Let's get our rod and reel. See what we're gonna do with this finger mullet. See if we can get a flounder off this pier. Let go. All right, I felt some pressure on this one. It's out there pretty far, so we got some work to do. This could
could be first creeper keeper crab of the day. Got a lot of line out. Oh, it's mad now. It is mad now. It's mad, y'all. It's pulling harder. It is tugging hard. We got one on the board. Look at that. I see how rusty is, all that brown. So I mean, it's just full of meat. Yes, look at that. It has like a hole in it too, right here. You've been, you've been fighting, huh? Mm. Oh man. Look, I didn't bring my pot. I would have ate them out here. All right, so got one in the bucket. We still need to catch a flounder. And about 11 more of these. color B uh, got him let's go let's go y'all this is the ugliest crab I have ever seen <clears throat> look at that look what's going on with that that boy has been mudding, mudding. Wow, that is crazy. It's a male for show, so y'all can see. But have y'all ever seen a crab that color before? Can I even eat this? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna eat it, I don't care. Mm -mm. YOLO, you only live once. Yeah, bro, I'm dipping your rusted behind in some butter. Mm, yeah, a little garlic. All right, all right, all right. I'm not gonna talk about eating while I'm holding. I'm sorry. In the bucket he goes. You barely see it. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Oh, look how big this one is, y'all. Giant. He's trying not to get out. Hold on. Holy smokes. Giant. Giant. He's trying to climb out. My bucket's too far away. Hold on, but there you go. Nice one. Nice one indeed, y'all. It's another male full of meat. This boy is heavy. Heavy, you hear me? You hear me? Yes. <clears throat> so far, Freeline is getting them, man. I have not caught any on my drop nets yet. Just Freeline throwing them out. Let's keep remaining being productive. I still have not had the opportunity to start fishing yet. For good reason. You. Yep. Uh, this day started at 12 o'clock. It's now 3.30. It's been three and a half hours, no fish, four crabs. Quite honestly, I want at least 12 crabs. But my, my nets are not producing, man. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? We got a good, a good high tide. We got a good flow, tide movement. I mean, everything is pretty much what it should be to catch fish, quite honestly. Just gotta catch one. I have another rod in the car. I could make another bootleg Carolina rig with the second rod, but yeah, I could just put it up in my rod holder right there, in my cart. But nah, man, I don't wanna do too much. Just, just focus on the small things for now. Just focus on the small things. I feel like I need to throw my free lines out farther. 
I'm brainstorming, don't mind me, I'm brainstorming. I'm gonna throw my free lines out farther. Which means I'm gonna have to pull in almost 15, 20 yards of line if I get a crab on, but there's no point of doing my free lines this close if I'm not getting no damn crabs. All right, let me hydrate, readjust, I'll be back. Bro, I thought that was big. It's a damn stick. No claws. Interesting. You can't do nothing to me, buddy, because you don't got no claws. <clears throat> Keeper. Male. No claws. Surviving. Till today, because I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. But damn. Life has been tough for this guy, man. I mean, both his claws are gone. But he out here still hustling and eating. God dang it, now I feel bad about eating him. Should I eat him or should I throw him back? Because he doesn't have any claws. You know what? No, that's discriminatory. No, that's, that's, me. No, that's discriminatory, right? Just because he doesn't have any arms doesn't mean I should treat him any differently. Yeah, yeah. He getting eight. All right, y'all, so I'm back at home, back in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the first segment of the episode, The Catch. Now, I know what some of y'all think right now. There was not a lot of catching going on in that segment. First of all, I don't like being judged in my own damn house. Second of all, I accomplished two out of the three goals I had. I was able to cast net some bait, and I was able to catch a crab. I just could not catch a flounder. It is not my fault. It is still 90 degrees outside the last week of October. Where's the cold friend? Where's the cold friend? Where the flounder at? I don't know. It's not my fault. But I was able to catch five keeper crabs. So I'm gonna do a little taste test. Something I've never done before. Deep fried crab. That's right, deep fried crab. I'm in Texas, you know, we deep fry everything. So why not blue crab? Check it out, I think we might like it. All right, check it out, check it out, check it out. What we're gonna be doing is some simple flour. I got my Louisiana crawfish mixture. I got some pancake mix that may or may not happen. A couple of eggs, that's all we need. I'm gonna do this on the side. I got my deep fryer here. This is the chef style deep fryer. I got this at, let me say H-E-B, I can't remember, it's been a minute. So this is where we're going to deep fry our crab at. We'll talk about that later in a second. So yeah, yeah, simple recipe. Just like you deep fry any fish, any chicken, same thing. We're just going to deep fry some crab. Simple enough. I think I can do it. All right, y'all, first thing first, let's clean our crab. Now I know just because I said clean the crab, some of y'all are already offended. Nah, Renee, I want the crab butter. I want the guts, huh? I'm not team guts. I'm sorry, I'm not team crab butter. I'm team clean crab, all right? If you don't want to clean your crab, you don't got to clean your crab. You can just leave them alone. Just jump to the second part of this part, of the catch and cook, whatever. But yeah, I'm cleaning my crab. So if you've never cleaned a crab before, super simple. Well, let me show you. Here's a crab, all right? Now this bad boy, he's been sleeping on ice for about three hours. The crab is still alive, but it's in a comatose state, okay? So what I like to do to get started, I like to take these swimmer legs here, get a good grip and place them in the corner of my sink, just like that. This pointer right here, I like to get a good grip on that, right? So I'm applying pressure with the legs this way, and I'm pulling the top shell the opposite way. I'm just gonna slowly do it, and you're gonna get that nice, satisfying sound of his head coming off. A little graphic, but whatever. Now this right here is the crab butter, right? This is the stuff that people will literally drink out of once they cook it. Yeah, I'm not a fan, I'm sorry, okay? I'm just, just not a fan. All right, next, after that, you have this little part right here. Call it the face. I wanna call it the mouth. I just kinda grab it and twist it like so, like that. Just kinda twist off the mouth. Perfect. Next right here, these are the gills. A lot of people make the mistake of calling them lungs, but these are gills, right? AKA dead man fingers. You don't wanna eat that, okay? You definitely don't want to eat that. Let's put our bag over here. So we're just going to get a knife and we're just going to scrape the gills off. As so. 
real simple. All right, got the gills off. Yeah, I love blue crab, seriously. All right, perfect. All right, after you get the gills off, we got the gills, we got the face. Once again, all this interior part, a lot of people really like the taste of that. They call it crab mustard, crab butter, call it guts, you know? I'm not really a fan of it, so we're gonna get rid of it. So all you have to do is to do a little stream of water, all right? After a little stream of water, toothbrush. Shout out to the YouTubers, the Old Couple Outdoors. This is where I learned this from. After that, a little toothbrush, kind of rinse it out. Get your toothbrush and just start pushing backwards. All that crab butter goodness, as some people like to call it. All right. So I just scrub it with a toothbrush like that. Mm hmm. So again, y'all, the crab is dead. There. Then I just kind of do a combination of rinse with the toothbrush as well. Scrub it in, get them cavities. So remember, man, we're, we're deep frying this. So it's gonna be a little different in comparison to steaming and in comparison to boiling, okay? And that's it, y'all. That is how you clean a blue crab if you're not familiar. At this point, if you wanted to boil it, you can boil it. If you wanted to steam it, you can steam it. But since we're gonna deep fry it, it's gonna leave it just like this. Something else though, one second. One more memento. What I need is, all right. Now, since I'm gonna be deep frying this, I wanna just kinda crack. And also, I do this as well when I steam the crab. You just wanna kinda, just a small crack, just so that steam or water, or whatever you're doing, in my case, grease, can get access to it. So I'm just gonna do some cracks along the shells. Like that. And like that. That's it, y'all. Another thing I like to do as well is to snap it. Uh, something about that sound is satisfying. I'm not a psychopath, I promise you. Snap it into place. Two pieces. I don't know why, it just makes it taste better because you get exposed to all that meat right there. So I snap it. All right, y'all, so I got about four more of these to go. We'll put this to the side. We'll do the whole batter, base, and deep fry, and pretty much it. Simple process, just like frying fish. Be back in a second. All right, y'all, time to base our crab clusters. I'm excited, man, because um, I've never done this before, so I don't know if it's gonna work. Oh yeah, side disclaimer, man. I forgot to mention when I was cleaning my crab, don't forget to take the apron off, just kind of get the little pointy thing and just tear it off. I'll probably show it in another video. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a couple of eggs, okay? Take a couple of eggs here, there. Another egg here, there. And what I'm gonna do with my eggs is just, you know, do a quick whisk of the eggs to make sure that, um, you know, it's beaten properly. Sorry. So we'll just whisk our eggs here like that. And this will help the flour stick to the crab. Okay. So next, excuse me y'all. Get our crab cluster here. We'll just take some clusters and simply mix it in there. It's like I almost know what I'm doing, right? I really don't, I've never done this before. So we're gonna get some flour. I guess I have some pancake mix. I'll probably do a couple, just experiment with that. Just to see what that's like. So I'm gonna take about a cup of flour there. We're gonna add some of that Louisiana crab boil spice that I come to love so much here. Just put that in there. There we go. And we're gonna Give our dry mixture a quick little mix. All right, just like that. I need another plate. Un momento. 
All right, y'all, so next, we got a lot going on. Okay, so I'm taking my basic and egg crab cluster, right? Put it right here in the powder, okay? And we'll just kind of get a little mix in there. Put that there. Like I said, y'all, this is just like bacon fish. Put that there. We'll put it on a plate. It's ready to fry. Once again, we base it in egg. Put the claw there. So my assumption is this is how it's supposed to go. Like that. And there. Perfect, right? Simple enough. <laughs> We'll continue to um, do the same process of base it in egg. After we base it in egg, base it in flour. Like flour and seasoning mix, don't forget that. Put it on a plate. Base it in egg, base it in flour, put it on a plate. Uh-oh. You gotta base it in egg, then do what, what, what? Base it in flour, but what, what, what? Then what you do after you base it in flour? Uh, you put it on the plate. My album dropping next fall, y'all be ready for it. So I have one, two, so I'm gonna do half and half. I'm gonna do half with this regular flour and the other half with this pancake mix right here, y'all can see that. This add water buttermilk pancake mix because why not why not so let me um dump this out i'll put my pancake mix in we'll do the same thing we'll head over to the deep fryer i think it says it takes about five minutes to do this and we'll check it out if everything goes well we should have a, a money shot coming up but i'm gonna take it to the deep fryer too be back all right y'all so we have everything basted this is the flour season basic blue crabs and this is the pancake flour season blue crab we got our temperature up to 350 degrees. And yeah, that's it. We're gonna just drop them in separately. Let me see if I can get an angle. Hold on, let me get y'all adjusted real quick. Can y'all can y'all see me? Yeah, I'm, I'm glistening. It's all right, it's hot in this kitchen, y'all. All right, y'all, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and drop these in. So what I'm gonna do, we'll set them in the tray first. You know what, y'all need to see this, hold on. Give me a second, I want y'all to see this. I'm gonna try to do it with one hand. This in the tray, so like that. So five crabs, a total of ten clusters, because I break them in half. There we go. All right. So next, I'm gonna slowly, because you got some. I mean, you got water in those crabs, so slowly dip them like that. Ooh, you can just taste the southern goodness. That's it. So we'll just let those sink and cook for about, all right. Another good reason to have a deep fryer, way more safer than trying to do this on your stove. There we go. All right, so we'll cook those for about five minutes. Um, check on with them, then we'll do the pancake batter ones. If everything goes well, we'll have a good money shot and do a taste test and comparison and we'll see. Almost done, yeah. y'all and there you have it it looks delicious okay but quite honestly i've never eaten anything deep fried that was not good like factual so what i'm gonna do this is the flour one i'm just gonna take that swimmer leg let's break off that swimmer Ooh. okay see that this is a swimmer look at that 
aroma. Now, before I put any butter on it, I just want to taste it fresh. Hold on. Mmm. It tastes real clean. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. Hold on, let me get a little butter on it. Just a, just a tad of butter. A little, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Hold on. It was a 10, but butter makes it a 20. Mm, 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 mm. I'm trying to resist eating the shell. I don't think you should be able to eat the shell. I think when it comes to blue crab, you can only eat like a blue crab that has a really soft shell. Do not eat a blue crab that has a hard shell. Okay, that's delicious. Now this is the one that I, you see that? Whatever. This is the buttermilk pancake one. Let's get the swimmer. It's my favorite part. Ooh. Taste that. Fur. Mmm. Oh wow. Cause like even though you're not eating the, the actual shell, I don't know if it really makes that much of a difference. Do a little butter. Mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah, I take that back. The pancake one tastes better for some reason. Let me get another piece. I, I gotta be biased. One more piece, hold on. Mm. Mm. Y'all, if you never had deep fried blue crab, you are missing out. Mm. It was a long day yesterday. It took me about six to seven hours to cast net, fish, and catch blue crabs. But that was worth it, man. <sighs> Deep fried blue crab. Who would have thunk it? Well, y'all, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you join my family and subscribe. Once again, my name is Ray Nevoy, AKA Fishing Trips. And it's been real, y'all. Peace.